Welcome to video 5 of AQA GCC Chemistry 9 to 1 revision titled Energy Changes Exothermic and Endothermic Reactions Energy is conserved in chemical reactions. The amount of energy in the universe at the end of a chemical reaction is the same as before. The reaction takes place. This is like the law of conservation of mass instead of mass we're looking at energy. If a reaction transfers, react, uh, <coughs> transfers energy to the surroundings the product molecules must have less energy than the reactant by the amount transferred. For example if we had a chemical reaction with so much energy before and afterwards we have energy that's been transferred such as heat or light, then they must have less use usable energy after the reaction. Therefore, the chemical energy must have gone down. An exothermic reaction is one that transfers energy to the surroundings. And as a consequence, the surroundings increase in temperature. In fact, the word exo in exothermic means gives out, and thermic, like in thermometer, means heat. So an exothermic reaction gives out heat and as a consequence the temperature of the surroundings increase. Exothermic reactions include combustion, many oxidation reactions such as rusting and neutralization when an acid neutralized by a base. Everyday uses of exothermic reactions include self-heating cans and hand warmers. An endothermic reaction is the opposite of an exothermic reaction. It's one that takes in energy from the surroundings so the temperature decreases. In fact, the N in endo means to go in like an entrance. And thermic means heat. So if heat's been taken in from the surroundings, the surroundings will get cooler. And that energy is going to be transferred into chemical energy. Endothermic reactions include thermal decomposition reactions such as calcium carbonate being broken into calcium oxide and carbon dioxide <clears throat> or the reaction of citric acid and sodium hydrogen carbonate in sherbet. Even some sports injury packs are based on endothermic reactions where you break the packet and a salt dissolves in water and because energy gets taken in from the surroundings as it gets converted into chemical energy the, temp the temperature um, will decrease for the surroundings which is on on your sports injury. Require practical four. You're required to be able to investigate the variables that affect the temperature changes in reactions of solutions such as metal acid, acid carbonate, neutralization and displacement of metals. In this investigation you take a polystyrene cup because it's a good insulator and you take a solution for example 100 cm cubed of sulfuric acid at 2 molar concentration and then you add another reactant such as sodium hydroxide 50 cm cubed 1 molar solution and when we combine the two together and stir we measure the maximum temperature rise. Now obviously the variables for this could be the material of the polystyrene cup, the volume of acid, the volume of base the concentration of acid and the concentration of base. Something that affect, also affects this reaction is heat loss. So the material of the cup, whether you have a lid or whether you stir, are all variables that affect the temperature change in the reaction. Reaction profiles. Chemical reactions can only occur if the reactants collide with each other with sufficient energy. For example, if NO2 reacts with O3 but ever so slowly, then it will have no reaction. The minimum amount of energy that particles must have to react is called the activation energy. If NO and O3 have the activation energy, this will resolve in a, an effective collision or successful collision, and then a reaction will take place. Reaction profiles can be used to show the relative energies of reactants. So here we have the chemical energy of the reactants. 
and heat is taken in to break the bonds. We call this activation energy. Heat's given out in bond making. So we have the energy of the products. The overall change for the reaction is what happens to the chemical energy of the reactants at the start and at the end. And in this example, the energy, the chemical energy of the reactants has gone down and this would have been released as heat. In fact, the word N again means to go in and phalpy is another word from the Greek word phalpine for heat. As this is saying, has the heat gone in? In this case, no, heat has gone out because the chemicals have less energy at the end as they did when they start. Bond breaking requires heat energy to be converted into chemical energy. In fact, <clears throat> the definition of energy is, for the, is something that can cause work to, to take place. So if we consider breaking bonds as work, we need energy. And we take that energy in the form of heat. And we convert that heat energy into chemical energy. So at the beginning, the reactants have this amount of energy. And then as we break the bonds, we take in thermal energy. So there is an increase in energy. So the reactants have more energy at the beginning. And we called the energy required to break the bonds as the activation energy. But the opposite of bond breaking is bond making. And if the opposite of bond making <clears throat> is the opposite of bond breaking, then in this case, the chemical energy is going to actually be released as heat. And this process is called exothermic. So as chemical energy gets released to the surroundings as heat, we get a decrease in energy. <clears throat> if more energy is released than it is put in, then the overall reaction is endothermic. The enthalpy, represented by H, change, represented by delta, would be negative. That is, that the chemical energy has decreased because it has been transferred to the surroundings as heat. Remember bond breaking takes in heat energy. Well, in this reaction, we put a lot of heat energy in, in the form of the activation energy. So all this chemical energy, the really en chemical energy of the reactants increases massively as we transfer heat into chemical energy. But during the bond, pro bond making process, the opposite, only a small amount of chemical energy transfers to heat. Now, since more energy was put in, in bond breaking than was released at bond making, the overall process is endothermic. That is, that the N Val P, so heat go in, change, has actually increased. The reactants have gained heat energy, which has been transferred to chemical energy, so the products have more energy, more chemical energy, than they did at the beginning. Therefore, heat, enthalpy, has been taken in, N, and we have a positive enthalpy change. Or the overall process is endothermic, because thermal energy heat, thermic, has been taken in. Here's a typical example of a question you might get in the exam. What it asks you to do is use the information in the table to calculate the bond energy for the BR bond. Now, we know that bond breaking is the energy you need to put in at the beginning, and we know that bond making is the energy released as we go out. The question also tells us that the overall energy change of the reaction is minus 95 kilojoules per mole. So we know overall it's exothermic. So if we know what the, the sum of all the bonds being broken and take away all the energy that's been released, we have a sum for the overall enthalpy change. So I know that I have to break one carbon-carbon double bond with a value of 612 kilojoules per mole and one, two, three, four, four times the carbon hydrogen at four, one, two. And I also know I have to break the Br uh, molecule in two. But the question doesn't give me the value of that, so I'm going to leave that as B hyphen Br. I also know that I need to break, uh, sorry, make all of these bonds. So that's one carbon carbon bond at three, four, eight four carbon hydrogen bonds at 412 and two carbon bromine bonds 
uh, 2 times 276. So now I have my values. I can resolve the numbers. So the total amount of energy that goes in is 2260 plus the unknown Br2 molecule bond. But I know that total energy released through bond making is 2548 and I know this equals minus 95. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 2548 to both sides to eliminate that and take away 2260 from both sides and I'm left with the BR bond enthalpy as being plus 193 kilojoules per mole. Chemical cells and fuel cells, and this is for students of chemistry only, so trilogy students don't need to know this. Cells contain chemicals which react to produce electricity. The voltage produced by a cell is dependent on a number of factors, includes, including what the electrodes are made from, and what the electrolyte is made from, and the relative potential differences between both of the half cells. A simple cell can be made by connecting two different metals in contact with electrolyte. For example, I have copper metal and in a solution of its two plus ions, and I have silver metal in a solution of its one plus ions connected together by a high resistance voltmeter and the circuit's complete with some filter paper soaked in potassium nitrate called a so uh, salt bridge. Batteries consist of two or more cells connected together in a series to provide a greater voltage. For example, if each one of these cells was 1.5 volts, the battery would be a 4.5 volt. In non-rechargeable cells, and batteries, and the chemical reactions stop when one of the reactants has been used up. Alkaline batteries are non-rechargeable batteries. Rechargeable cells and batteries can be recharged because when the energy has been used up and transferred into the circuit, we can recharge them by reversing the cell by applying an external electrical current. Here's another question from a past paper. Here we have two metals in an electrolyte and a higher resistance voltmeter connecting them together. The question states that if metal 2 is more reactive than metal 1, the voltage mesh will be positive. If metal 1 is more reactive than metal 2, the voltage mesh will be negative. The bigger the difference in reactivity, the larger the voltage between copper and chromium is 1.2 volts. And we know the difference between chromium and iron is 0.5 volts. Well, the question wants to know is what's the difference between iron and copper? So as you can see, the difference will be 0.7 volts. But because metal is the more reactive metal and iron is metal 1, it will be negative 0.7 volts. Fuel cells. Fuel cells are supplied by an external source of fuel, e.g. hydrogen and oxygen or air. These are different from normal cells in that they, they require a constant amount of fuel. The fuel is oxidised electrochemically within the fuel cell to produce a potential difference. Note that this is not the combustion of hydrogen. This is a, an electrochemical reaction, so heat is not produced, which makes it more efficient. The overall reaction of a fuel cell involves the oxidation of water. Hydrogen gas comes in and at the electrode has its electrons removed forming hydrogen ions. The electrons are carried to the motor to do work and pass to the upper electrode where the hydrogen ions have been attracted to it and as oxygen comes in, the oxygen reacts with the hydrogen ions produced and the four electrons to form water 
as water is released. The overall reaction, removing like terms from either side, is O2 plus 2 moles of H2 makes 2 moles of water.